Good evening, this is Bruce. Uh, this is a continuation of the tie rod project or um, the case of, of the bent rod. And um, we've, we've, uh, yesterday we drilled the hole out in the tie rod bar and uh, the tap and die have arrived to complete this project. Um, and what, we, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to open up this parcel. This has come from my uh, special supplier in Newcastle in, um, in New South Wales. Um, he's, um, he's a gentleman and he, ha he carries a very wide range of equipment um, and whenever he pa sends me a parcel he al always sends some lifesavers um, and uh, these sweets so in every parcel I get one of these and it's hard to um, say no to it. I've never sent one back yet. So let's have a look and see what he's got. Um, the tool we needed for this job is a 16 uh, TPI 1 inch tap and die uh, at great cost to the, the management but the client was happy to pay that money to get this job done. So what we have here is the tap of the die and probably the bill as well. Um, so here we have the tap. It's capital, that means it's, it's probably been made in Melbourne. Uh, 1 inch 16 UN HSG. It has a, a tiny little uh, dimple in the back. So we're going to see whether the 15 16 drill that I drilled in there is actually going to be suitable to um, to do this job. So it's a trial and error that we'll have um, sight unseen. What I'm going to do is I'll swing the camera around to the other side. Uh, the die by the way is a die nut also made by Capital. Um, and they can supply a die or a tap basically within 48 hours of, of order. I'll just swing the camera around to the area where we're going to do the cut, cut the thread, and um, we'll then see, we'll be able to follow through with this. I'll just adjust the camera a bit more, um, and we'll see how we go with making this work. Okay, we found a suitable spanner. I'll put those things aside. And I've got one of my very small um, button center points, which I'll use to center up the um, center up the tap. Colin, Colin Riley, uh, a gentleman who's subscribed to my um, my channel has asked me to show him how I go about this so how could I refuse um, let's have a look and see how all this is going to work all things being equal the diameter that we've allowed for should be should be correct Uh, what, what we do uh, in different countries is different stuff, but this is a rock oil RTD metal cutting liquid. Uh, it's black stuff and uh, it's the same similar material that they use for cutting threads on, on pipe dies. We'll, we'll give this a liberal dosage um, and uh, we'll keep pressure on that while we tap this in. And, and really, uh, Colin was saying that he struggles with taps even half this size. Well, the secret with, with any, th any tapping work um, in, one, in one instance is to make sure that your, your pilot hole or your um, minimum, the diameter that you need for the tap uh, is the correct one. 
according to whatever tables you've got. This is starting to get quite tight. Um, what we'll do now is we'll back it off and with a with a hand tap it's uh, extremely important to clear the uh, the swarf whereas with a um, with a machine tap they uh, they are much more um, user friendly as far as that's concerned and they either uh, the, the gun tap will push the push the swarf through they're made for through holes and a spiral flute tap will pull the um, pull, pull the, uh, the swarf out uh, in the direction of uh, the tap penetrating now we'll put that back in again and this will be probably a bit of a laborious job but we'll see how it goes We probably won't even need that centre anymore shortly um, because we really want to be able to work this tap backwards and forwards. It's quite tight. It's very tight in fact and it's starting to wander a bit. That can happen occasionally. Unfortunately, in the situation we are, we can't use a normal tap handle because the length of it will be too long um, to facilitate this work. So what we'll probably do now is get um, a second spanner and we'll try it with two spanners and if that doesn't work then we're going to have to maybe ream this hole a fraction I'm hoping not um, because that could be quite a painful exercise um, this material as we talked about yesterday uh, is free cutting so but had we had a, a full taper or a starter instead of just this uh, intermediate one, we were probably be le seeing less resistance. But it's, well, it's too expensive to go and buy three taps the same. So we're going to try and make this work with two, with two spanners. This is a 14 mil, and I think a 916 should work. It's a bit awkward here uh, because of uh, the fact that you go 916 is going to work fine. Um, we try and get more of an even push on this, starting to um, make, have its own mind there. So we'll, we'll bring that back into the centre, make sure that that centre work is working properly. Um, we don't lose the tap um, to its own devices. This situation is, is far more difficult than using the lathe because you're working, everything's working in reverse to the way you would normally operate the lathe. So we'll have a go at this. We'll just keep that pressure up. With two hands, it works a lot better. Best, of course, if it's opposite. I think we can now move this further away. Um, now we've got a bite. Unfortunately, it's getting. I will come back on that. We'll get rid of this obstruction. We'll 
take the point out just so it doesn't poke a hole in my hand. We can even at this stage take the uh, chuck out. See how we go with this. Plenty more cutting fluid. Cutting fluid is the um, is the cheapest commodity that's required here, and I don't um, I don't consider that as a cost as such. I um, I prefer to use more than less, and. Uh, it stands you in good stead to keep your tools running properly. Um, the steel faces don't suffer because of it um, and it works all well. So now we'll continue on. At this stage I could probably take this out now, put it in a vise and then use a tap handle and it'd be far more convenient and um, I think that's what I'd like to do actually. So what we might do is strip it off here, put it in the vise that's adjacent to us, reset up the camera and, and run another second series on that. So uh, we shall do that. So bye for now and we'll be back once we set it up in the vise.